Hi, my name is Lena and welcome to my channel. Let's talk about The Master and Margarita by Mikhail Bulgakov. Bulgakov. Uh, if you have read it, uh, what do you think about it? Uh, let me know in the comment section down below. Well, <laughs> it's a difficult book to discuss, I think. First of all, it was a body read with D. Marshall Osborne and all the discussions was were fun, all of them. Uh, so, this uh, story is set during the Stalin era and all these small people, they live and they do not know uh, live their ordinary lives and they do not know that uh, Dark Powers, mainly a small devil um, named Voland, has come to Moscow because uh, Moscow was chosen as a place for the annual ball that he gives to the Dark Powers. So, the story is very simple. He comes to Moscow, uh, he and his helpers, uh, they, there is a preparation for the ball, there is ball itself, then there is tying up of some loose ends, and then they uh, go away uh, to, a, to wherever they came from. So, it's that simple. We also have... <laughs> Uh, the master, and also a writer, and Margarita. Margarita was married, but they uh, meet each other, they fell in love, they fall in love, um, and the master uh, writing, is writing, writes his best novel, uh, basically about the last days of Christ. And he tries to publish it, and of course he cannot publish it, because the propaganda is that Christ has never existed, that there is no God, that there is no devil. So he cannot publish his work. Um, even more so, he becomes bullied and oppressed and bad-mouthed and multiple papers and he loses his nerve. He's a very big character, I didn't like him at all. He loses his nerve and he ends up uh, in a salon. So, Margarita, she uh, doesn't know where he is and what happens, happened to him. She has no idea. How these two stories, the story of Voland and the story of Master and, and the Master and Margarita connect? The thing is, uh, Voland needs a hostess uh, for his ball. He is not married. And he, uh, through his helpers, approach Margarita. He makes a deal with her. He, she, that she will be this hostess on his ball. And uh, Margarita takes this deal. Wollen doesn't actually um, promise her anything in return, but she wants to ask for her master to be returned to her. And she takes this deal. Guys, I know Margarita, she is an image of this ideal woman that will stay with you, that will stay by you against the entire world, that will love you and will care for you and will support you, and basically will share all your troubles. And there are, there is at least one song written to her, about her. And I didn't like her. I didn't like her at all. She was so theatrical. Um, very theatrical. I didn't feel like she loved the master. I didn't feel it. Um, but anyway, let's continue with the story. So, I read this book first time at school. I think I was forced to read it at school. And I didn't really understand the story. I thought all the parts and bits about Voland and his helpers were extremely fun. And I think I skipped all the parts about um, 
the master writing novel about the Christ, basically, because I thought them to be extremely boring. The story is multi-layer, multi-layer. There are uh, th three layers. First one is an ordinary life. An ordinary life by ordinary people when, where you can see some of the writers enjoying various spoils, spoils because they are approved of um, by government. And some writers who are not that fortunate uh, are being oppressed and bullied and um, receive all this bad uh, media coverage. So, <laughs> you also can, can see um, many different little things that Bulgakov hated about life back then. The second layer is a mystical layer. Um, it's about Voland and his helpers and his dealings in Moscow. And the third layer is a biblical layer. Basically, it's a novel that uh, Master was writing. Uh, this is the story of the last, last days of Christ. Uh, his sentencing to death, being sentenced to death and being crucified, basically. So, I was struck on this uh, reading by the fact that nobody who comes across Wallen and his helpers um, get out unscathed. Because uh, they all um, have their small things, they all are kind of petty criminals and they got punished, all of them. Uh, Wallen and his helpers, they um, get rid of, uh, of people in their way just like that. And it's uh, written with a very good, although very dark sense of humor, and it's funny. From the very start, it's funny, but it goes on and on and on, and it stops being funny. At some point, it stops being funny, because uh, I understood that uh, Volant is some sort of projection of Stalin in this mystical world. And I started to make these parallels, and it stopped being funny for me. For me it, became a bit terrifying. Uh, so nobody who meets Wollant and his helpers uh, get out unscathed. They all get arrested or uh, get into asylum. And um, I realized that all these uh, petty criminals, they did not deserve the punishment they get. So it was a bit depressing, <laughs> a bit dark. Um, then, I have never realized before that this whole story, that the central part of this whole story is this uh, black mess, this ball that Wallen uh, gives annually. It's a very, very strange story because the main characters are a devil, and his helpers. The main characters are dark powers. And they are here to uh, serve this uh, black mess. And they are quite likable. They are charming. So it's, this is a very strange story. Considering that they get what they want and they just, you know, <laughs> come back home. Or whatever. I want to talk to you about two versions, um, two interpretations of this book by two different people that I am familiar with. First one I have heard from uh, Dmitry Bykov, who is a playwright and a literary critic, I think. He also hosts a show on TV where he gives lectures to children to high school kids. And one of these lectures was on master, the Master and Margarita. And he said that this book um, shouldn't have been published 
because this book uh, was a very personal matter. It was a letter to Stalin from Bulgakov. He says that the main idea of this book is that Bulgakov tells Stalin that he understands that the Stalin is an evil, but he understands that he understands that Stalin is a necessary evil, that he is needed for this period of time in Russia. And basically that uh, Bulgakov has nothing against Stalin. <laughs> but he only asks, asks Stalin to save the artist, not to touch the artists. So, uh, with this book, Bulgakov basically tells Stalin to do whatever Stalin wants, just to save artists. And it's um, a very interesting idea, it's a very interesting theory. He, to break this theory, be, considering that Voland at the end, in the end, does save um, the master and Margarita. But I don't agree with Dmitry Bikov that such um, that Bugakov wanted to be safe, saved in such a way, and that he wanted his uh, fellow artists to be saved in such a way, way because it kind of reminds me of Bible of the book of uh, Job. Uh, Job. Uh, probably, sorry guys, it's chapter 14 uh, and it's extract 13, when Job, Job asks uh, the God uh, to basically hide him in the tomb or in the grave for a time being, so Job could have some peace, something like that, and I don't think that Bulgakov wanted that uh, to all his fellow uh, artists. I don't like the way uh, the master and Margarita are saved in this book. Uh, well, uh, it's he also uses uh, the we don't have a name for the author for the master. We have only the title, the master, and Dmitry Bikrov uh, tells us that. It's because the book was addressed to Stalin, and when Stalin wanted to know whether a poet or a writer was good enough, he asked, um, but is he the master? So the master of his trade, and that's why uh, we don't have the name for the character, just the title, the master, the master of writing. Something like that. That's a very interesting theory. Next, uh, an interpretation is made by a, by a priest. I will leave links in fo into info box down below to all the material, but unfortunately you need to know Russian um, to use it. So the priest version is that First of all, <laughs> he pays attention to the fact that this roman is, this novel is about uh, a devil, Doug Powers and his helpers, and about a black mass. And um, he thinks, and it's a very interesting uh, idea, that the master never wrote uh, this novel, that he hadn't imagined it, that this novel was dictated to him by word. And I can see how he can back this theory, can back this theory up, because Wolland knows the story word by word before we even meet the master and Margarita. Wolland says that he saw all this uh, events that he saw uh, Yeshua talking to Ponty Pilate, that he saw Yeshua being sentenced to death, 
and he saw him being crucified. He was there, he saw all that. So the master, he couldn't imagine the detail, details right. All these details uh, saw Voland. Voland saw all these details and he dictated his own gospel to ma the master. So it's a gospel written by a devil about the life of Christ the way he wanted it to look like. And this priest, he also says that the master uh, creates a world without God. And it's a very interesting idea because at that time uh, in Russia, in Moscow especially, this story was written after the main church of the Moscow. It was uh, the church of Christ Savior was blown up. So at that time, Russia was a country without God. And uh, the priest says that the master creates a world without God. But I don't think that it's impossible. I am very ignorant about religion, but what I think that there is, you cannot mention a devil without mentioning God. So in our perception, the one doesn't exist, exist without the other. So it's impossible, in my humble opinion, to create a world without God, with the devil only. Well, <laughs> and the authority of the priest uh, is, um, um, for me, it's a bit undermined by the fact that he does a factual mistake. Um, when uh, Woland and his helpers, when they leave in Moscow and they take in uh, the master and Margarita to this safe place where he will be writing and she will be caring for him and just loving him, he says, the priest says that the master uh, sees the whole procession changing uh, and becoming some sort of a royal procession. So, uh, a cat, uh, the cat, Begemot, uh, becomes a par, and um, Karoviev uh, becomes a knight, so it's a royal kind of procession. And he says that Master sees it, uh, see it all, but he sees it all because he's soul is ill but master doesn't look at him at them at this very time he looks at the moon and margarita sees this change so it's a factual mistake and this mistake uh, for me undermines the authority of priest um, and he also uh, has a very interesting theory that in this uh, safe place where Master should be writing and Margarita should be caring for him, that they will not be happy. That Master will um, discover that he cannot write because he wasn't the author of the novel. And Margarita will discover that she loved the novel, that she didn't love the writer. And they will be uh, together forever, totally ruined and hating each other in this safe place. It's a very interesting theory. But I did feel that Margarita uh, loves the novel more than she loves the writer. I don't know, I just felt that way. And it's a very <laughs> difficult um, story to discuss. I think there are more than two interpretations to this book and I will be trying to find more of those. And if I do, I will share it. But anyway, even if um, you will read this book uh, without trying to understand the idea behind it. It will give you a picture of living um, during the Stalin era. A small picture in, written with a very dark sense of humor. 
but why uh, talking about Dmitry Bekov? Why did he said that this book should have never been published? Because it started cults of Poland. Because uh, people read it just for the fun of it, just for the fun of reading a book about dark powers. Well, thank you for watching, goodbye and happy reading.